Hi, thanks for using my Court Coach. I'm Sarah and I'll be your instructor today as we talk about the Children's Holiday Schedule Attachment, also known as Form FL341C. As with all our court forms, you want to list your identifying case caption information at the top. Um, this form is uh, not a standalone form. It's one that would be attached to other forms and it can be attached to the petition or response, which are the forms you file at the outset of your case that gives the court a general framework of what relief you're going to be requesting through the pendency of the case. It can be attached to a request for order or a responsive declaration to a request for order. If either party files for any sort of temporary custody orders, um, then this form can be attached to those forms um, to give the court a general idea of the temporary orders that a party may be requesting. It can be attached and is most commonly attached to a formal order and a formal order can be either a findings and order after hearing, if there was a temporary hearing on a matter, it can be a judgment if there was a uh, final resolution of the case, or it can be a stipulation if there was an agreed upon order between the parties. Um, a lot of times these schedules are set forth in a family court services mediation report. Uh, if you, the parties went to family court services mediation, as part of their custody visitation request, then most of those reports will have some sort of holiday schedule, in which case you don't need to fill out this form as well. You can just attach a copy of that family court services recommendation if that's the order that the court is making. Um, on the other hand, if you uh, don't have that or you just prefer to use this form, you can also do that. This form is pretty comprehensive in terms of the holidays. It doesn't mean that you specifically have orders for every single one of these holidays. Um, some, hol some people are very big on holidays and do want to have specific orders for every Labor Day weekend, Columbus Day weekend. Um, other parties just sort of ha are happy with having the major holidays dealt with, Easter, Christmas, etc. So whichever holidays, you have specific orders for are the ones that you need to specifically identify in this attachment. Um, in the second column, it will list the times for the uh, holiday to be exercised. It can be 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sometimes 4th of July, we'll see 6 p.m. the day before till 10 a.m. the next day, whatever it is for that specific holiday, you want to list the times that that uh, exercise of time is to take place. And then um, you have the option in the next three columns of identifying which party gets that holiday. If it's a Mother's Day, a Father's Day, typically you're gonna mark every year mother will get Mother's Day, father will get Father's Day. Other holidays, they tend to alternate. And so you would want to put in even years, for example, if the year now is 2020 and you know that this is going to be the petitioner's year for the holiday, then you would mark even years. Every even year petitioner gets um, New Year's Eve. Every odd year respondent gets New Year's Eve. And it kind of just alternates usually. However, it is set forth in your orders. That's how you want to reflect it here. And then in page two, there are any holidays that are not specifically identified in the list provided on page one, then you would want to identify those here. And sometimes that can be more specific holidays to a particular religion, such as Jewish holidays or something like that. Um, and again, same rules, list the times and who is to get the holiday in what years. Sometimes the court will make orders that three-day weekends will be extended to the party who would normally have that weekend. If so, you can mark the box down here. If there's any other orders the court makes regarding certain holidays, you can identify it in the other box. Below that, there's a field that discusses vacation time. And um, a lot of times the court will make specific orders regarding vacation time that each parent or a particular parent may have a certain number of days or weeks, whatever that is, you would mark that here. Um, and how many times per year. Typically it's not really specified, but if the court does specify that, then you can list that in 2A. Um, there's usually a notification clause that the parent has to notify the other parent a minimum of let's say 30 days in advance. You would write in 30 um, with a basic itinerary. And then if there's a problem or an objection to that vacation clause, if the court makes orders regarding or authorizing the other party to be able to object, you would mark box 1A and list the number of days they have to respond with an objection to the vacation schedule. Um, and then if the parties can't agree on vacation plans, 
I haven't seen this a lot, but if the courts do make orders regarding what the parties are supposed to do in that instance, then you'd mark box 2B2 and the specific orders that the court makes to resolve that dispute, you'd mark the appropriate box here. Um, if the court makes specific orders authorizing the vacation to be able to take place outside of the state of California, you would mark 2C. Um, sometimes the court will make orders that vacations that take place outside of the United States, for instance, would require a written consent of the other party, um, or they could make that order specific to California. If they do, then you mark 2D and identify what is the restriction. And if there's any other orders the court makes, again, you would use our catch-all, which is in 2E regarding vacation time. This gets attached to uh, another document that we went over at the beginning. As we stated, it can be any of these documents here and submit it to the court um, as either your filing or your formalized order uh, after hearing our trial. I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.